Good morning, girls. I hope you have your coffee ready. It's really nice to have you again on a Thursday morning and to talk to you. You know, um, Psalm 91 has just been incredible, hasn't it? I hope you're memorizing it. I have memorized it too. Every morning I'm trying to waking up and say those first two verses. So let's say them together. If you can say them at home, say them. But we might all be learning them in different versions. The one I've learned is the NIV version here, which says, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. There we go. I had it on my phone here because I was just so scared. You know, when the camera's on, you just get nervous and you think, oh my goodness, I'm going to forget the words, but I have been memorizing it. It's just so important and so wonderful. So grab your coffees and we'll get started. All right? Wonderful. All right. The third session here is looking at his, the safety of us. Your safety, my safety, the safety of the believers. And I just wanted to say, you know, in the last two ones we've been looking at, are you abiding? Are you resting? Are you remembering to go to that quiet place and enjoy his presence? Because today we're going to be looking at the safety and we're going to be looking at verses three and four. There's a wonderful quote and I was looking one of the concordances and um, um, Spurgeon had actually shared it. And it says here, referring to this chapter, it is one of the most excellent works of this kind which has ever appeared. It is impossible to imagine anything more solid, more beautiful, more profound, and more ornamented. So it just really is incredible. And we get to delve into it today and find out a little bit about it. You know, this is all about your safety. You know, health and safety seems to be a, a new thing. You know, every company has a health and safety person and, you know, they're always looking out for your health and safety. But you know, I wanna say to you, health and safety has been around since the, the beginning of time because God is interested in your health and your safety and he is always totally interested in that. And that's what we're gonna find out about today, okay? I'm going to read the two verses and then I'm going to show, tell you what we're going to look at. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. And there's three things I wanted to talk to you about today. He is your deliverer, he is your carer, and he is your protector, okay? And the God who delivers you is the God who's going to protect you and care for you. And first of all, we're going to look at, I'm going to read a little bit of that verse 3 in the Passion Translation, because I quite like the way it says it. It says, He will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy, and he will protect you from false accusation and any, any deadly curse. So we're going to look at the trapper, the snare, and the condemnation that comes that he is wanting to protect us from. A few years ago, well, many years ago in our old house, we were sitting one night in the living room and we heard this little noise going up and down. And I thought, it can't be the children, it's too quiet. But it was going up and down and we realized it was above us that we had mice in the house. And I don't know if you've ever had mice in the house, but it was horrible. And I was imagining the whole house was gonna turn into the, you know, the Pied Piper of Hamlin. And you know, the next day, straight onto the phone, and we got a hold of a pest controller. And I was left with the job of telling him and explaining it all while Ian went off to work, and we had all the little kids there. And the pest controller came, and I explained the situation, and he just said, can I get into your loft? And he started putting little traps down everywhere. And I remember thinking, he has actually put them down in the wrong places, because I showed him where I thought the mice had come in, and he didn't put any there. And I showed him two or three things that I thought he should put the, the traps down. And when Ian came home, I explained where he'd put them. And he says, well, that's a fat lot of use. That's a lot of money we've wasted because he's gone to the wrong places. But you know, the trapper, the, the um, yeah, I guess the mice trapper, the mice catcher, he was an expert in this. He knew where to go. And he said, in the next two or three days, you will still hear them, but it'll gradually get quieter and they will gravitate towards these little boxes and whatever's inside them, they'll eat them and they'll die. And that's what happened. And you know, in this world, 
there is a trapper, and he's called Satan. And he tries to trap us. And the Lord says that he will keep you and he will protect you from the snare of the trapper. And you know something, traps come in all sorts of different forms. You know, Satan will try all sorts of things. We think, you know, like myself, I knew where the mice were going to come in, but the expert trapper knew exactly where to catch them. And sometimes we can protect ourselves. We think, oh, we're okay, I won't do this. But you know, Satan knows how to trap us. And you know, his devices are really scheming. You know, he can change the traps he sets for us. He can lace the traps with pleasure. He can use different decoys, and they're very alluring. You know, I, I kind of think of, um, and, you know, adverts on television. And I know for a lot of parents, they get so frustrated when they see these adverts. Because I can remember many years ago buying, buying one of our little girls a Barbie, a Barbie ho horse and the, and the Barbie doll. And she was so disappointed because the advert showed that Barbie rode on her horse and she jumped on her horse. And then she would get in the car and she would drive around and they were like, Mom, it doesn't work. Because you see, the advert that had lured them in was advertising something different. And that's sometimes what happens. And I just want to say to you out there, you know, um, you know, what friendships have you renewed that are actually going to pull you back? What traps are taking you back to a past fantasy that you didn't need to, to be reminded of anymore? You know, what friendships have we, are, 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 are quite destructive for us that we have started engaging with again? And you know, it says in Psalm 142, verse three, it says, for when I was desperate, when I was overwhelmed and about to give up, you were the only one there to help me. You gave me a way of escape from the hidden traps of my enemy. He always provides a way of escape. And another warning I want to say to you is, you know, traps actually are not always just sins. They can lace themselves up in all sorts of ways. I was thinking about the traps of legalism, the traps of your career, the traps of materialism, the traps of selfishness, of being selfish, sorry. You know, all of these kinds of traps can appear not too bad. You know, I mean, why not go after your career? But if your career becomes idle, and it becomes your master, and that's all you work for, then you have been lured into a trap that's away from Jesus, okay? The second thing is, is the snare. You know, a, I, I sometimes watch these programs of these fishermen, and they put these great big lobster pots down. In order to lure the lobster pots in, they put in great bait. And you know, those, that bait is to lure you into a place, and that's what a snare is. You know, a snare is just an old-fashioned word to trap a bird. It's a trap that they, they, they would use. And I just wanted to say to you girls out there, you know, are we, are we watching what sites we have clicked into? Are we watching what temptations we've succumbed to? We always think we're quite strong, and this won't harm us. What habits are controlling your finances? What habits are we are controlling us and taking us away? It's these little snares that we just slowly, quietly, subtly sometimes go into, and then we find ourselves in a difficult place. It says in Galatians 5, verse 7, before you were led astray, you were so faithful to the Messiah. Why have you turned away from what is right? Who has deceived you? And I would just say, girls, you know, if we don't abide with him, if we don't stay in that secret place, if we don't check ourselves, if we don't give ourselves an MOT, we will find these traps and we will find these snares that will pull us away and lure us. And one of the other things that mentions there is he will protect you from false accusation and deadly curses. And, you know, false accusation, you know, the devil is a liar. There is nothing else. God is truth. The devil is a liar. And another way, another way he will come at you is he can lure you away by making you question things. Remember, Eve was in the garden and he came along and said, are you sure the Lord said this? Are you sure? And then she started questioning herself. She knew what he had said, but suddenly she, she began to question herself. And so be careful. Let's always go back to the word of God, you know? We can't get away from the Word of God. The other thing is that I would say is, you know, it says in, in Revelation that Satan is an accuser of the brethren. And you know something, 
it says in the Bible, always go back to the Bible, says in the Bible that there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So don't, don't let him tell you what you were. Don't let him tell you how you have failed in the past. Don't let him remind you of your past. You know, if he reminds you of your past and he reminds you of your failures, why don't you just turn around and tell him about the blood of Jesus? You remind him about what his future is and he'll soon go. It says that we have to take authority over things. And I think when it talks about false accusation and it talks about um, deadly curse, you know, nothing can get you. Greater is he who is in you than anything that the world can do to you, than anything the world can say to you. So never be fearful because he is in control and he is in control of everything. So Romans 8.1, I've already quoted it. There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So that's another good verse to memorize. Get these words into you so that you can stand and you can be strong. So if you abide, if you stay with him, he will deliver you from the snares and from, the, from condemnation, from false accusation, and from the traps of the devil. The second thing I wanted to talk to you about is he covers you. Not only does he deliver you, but he covers you. And I just wanted to read you, read what it says here in verse four. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings, you will find refuge. You know, I found this, um, this picture, it, it surfaced on someone's page on Facebook or someone's Instagram. And I just absolutely loved it. It's up here and you can have a look at it. And it just was so lovely. I was so excited that I was actually able to Google the image and find the image, but it just is so amazing. You know, when you look at it, you just think it's a bird, but when you look closer, there's two gorgeous little baby birds, baby chicks there underneath those wings and they're protected. And that's what we're gonna talk about just now, okay? The feathers that are on birds, the feathers, are waterproof. They're incredible the way God has made them. The, there's different types of feathers. I was looking at it, you know, sometimes you, you get into something and then you start searching and then before you know it, you've kind of gone down this, this rabbit warren of information. But they were saying about feathers, you know, they don't just provide warmth and shelter. They also are waterproof. And they said that the wing feathers, the wing feathers give you major protection and where the joint is in the wing is where you feel real closeness and attachment to the bird. The little chick will feel that. So I just think verse four is amazing. It's a real metaphor. It's something, you know, God isn't a bird, but it says God is like a bird. And I just think that's amazing, like a mother bird. It reminds me of Matthew 23, verse 37, where Jesus is looking over Jerusalem and he says, oh, Jerusalem, so many times I, have, I would have longed to gather a wayward people as a hen gathers her chickens under her wings, but you were too stubborn for me. He longs to be that mother hen. He longs to be that encompassing father for you. You know, it reminds me of a story when um, I talk to children at Easter time. I usually tell the children, you know, when we're talking about Jesus dying on the cross and trying to make it simple for children. And I remember hearing this story many years ago about uh, a farm, I think it was in America in the prairie, and there was, this, there was this wonderful farmer and he had all sorts of animals. And there was this lovely hen that, of course, um, the children loved. And one night there was this awful fire. And you know, he came and he quickly, he didn't know what to do and he ran, they called the fire brigade and they, he went and quickly opened all the stable doors to release the animals so they wouldn't be burnt alive. And he released the horses and the cows and everything. And when he got to the barn, it was just completely engulfed and there was just nothing he could do. The fire people came, it all went out. And the next day when all the burning embers had come down, you know, he went in and of course the children were desperate to see if their little hen had, had survived. And as the farmer was going through, he came across the hen and he just felt so sad. There was a hen all charred and everything. And as he kicked over the hen, out came four or five little chickens and they started running away. See, the hen had given up her whole life for the sake and the safety of those little chicks. And that's what Jesus is like. And that's why I think the picture of a bird or a hen or an eagle is so much like Jesus. You know, he loves you, he protects you, and he wants to save you at any cost. And so 
when we look at that, you know, it says in Psalm 61, verses 3 to 4, it says, For you have been my refuge, says David. You have been my strong tower against the foe. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge under the shelter of your wings. And, you know, when you think of these wings, you know, if I read the verse, if I read verse 4 in the Passion Translation, it says, his, Jesus, his massive arms are wrapped around you, protecting you. You can run under his covering of majesty and hide. And I think it's just so beautiful. It's like a mother eagle spreading her huge, powerful wings over those little eaglets. It's just such a wonderful symbol of power and greatness and yet gentleness all at the same time. You know, I began to look at the characteristics of an eagle because so often the Bible speaks about eagles. And you know, eagles are these powerful birds, you know, that live in these really high places. And there's so many things about the characteristics about the eagle that kind of reminds us uh, me of this chapter. The eagle lives in these really high places. And you know, in my garden, there's many birds as you know about, but I've never seen an eagle pecking around in my garden. You know, they have excellent eyesight and, they, and they're able to, you know, they like, look at a storm and they actually enjoy a storm because they're able to, to ride the storm. They're fearless, they're faithful, they, um, they are very, very loyal. They'll, mate, they'll just have one mate for life. But you know, one of the most important things is when the eagle learns to soar and the eagle has these heavy, heavy, heavy wings and what it does is it stays there and it, it says that it can wait for two or three days until the thermals are right. And when the thermals are right, the eagle will wait and wait until it's right. Then it'll throw itself off and it lifts its arms and it allows the thermals to lift it, the thermals to go. It spends more time soaring than flapping. And I think as we abide in the shelter of the Almighty, we need to learn to soar with him. So often we're flapping around. So often we're wa wasting so much energy flapping and doing things and getting busy and getting involved. You know, I, I look at my garden, I see these little birds are darting back and forth. They're so busy, they never ever stop. But an eagle does, uses very little energy. It says it'll sit there and it'll wait. It can wait for days, it says, until the thermals are right, and then it'll spread its wings and it just soars. And that's what I see it is with Jesus. You know, he wants us to rest in him and to wait until the thermals are right. You know, just like an eagle rides and navigates those wind thermals, we need to navigate the wind thermals of the Holy Spirit and learn to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit operating through us. You know, I'm reminded of what it says in Isaiah 40, verses 28 to 31. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow weary or tired of his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and he increases the power of the weak. Even the youths will grow weary and tired and young men will stumble and fall, but those, in the secret place. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary and they will walk and not faint. And you know, I think the wings and feathers that are spoken about in, in Proverbs 91, they remind me of four simple things before we move on. The wings and feathers remind me of the protection from the elements, not just the physical elements, but the spiritual protection from the spiritual world. You know, God wants to protect us, not just from the physical things, but also from the false accusations, from the spirits that would want to take us down from the devil. The wings and feathers represent the power to fly and to soar and to be all you can be. The giftings that God has for you, he wants you to soar in them. Some of you haven't even tapped into what it is, but God has something for you that he wants to, you to learn. He also says with the wings and feathers, it's strength for the journey and for the journey ahead. There's, there's power. You know, it's not just a sudden burst of energy. It's to wait in the Lord and he will renew your strength for the journey ahead. And when you wait in that secret place, it's total care. It's total welfare for your whole being. And that's where he keeps you safe. And so if you shelter 
if you shelter in the, in the secret place and his massive wraparound arms cover you with his feathers, then you will be strong and you will soar. And the third thing I wanted to speak about was how he protects you. We've spoken about how he delivers you, how he covers you, and how he protects you. His, faithful, his arms of faithfulness are a shield keeping you from harm. You know, wings and feathers are pictures of big shields and small shields. Sometimes there's big battles, sometimes there's small battles. But shields are what we need for the battles. Shields represent God's faithfulness and his loyalty in every season and in every stage in life and in all circumstances of life. His faithfulness is unmovable, it is unchangeable, and he becomes our shield of defense and tower of stability. You know, when we have him as our shield and protection, he is faithful. And you know, I can't end this session without reading about the whole armor of God because you know, we are in a battle. And so I would advise you as well as memorizing this, it's really good, you know, in the morning to lie there and think, you know what, let's get ready for battle. If you were getting ready for battle, you would put on your helmet of salvation. You would start physically putting on these different things and you would go out there because you can't go out there on your own because the devil is always there roaming to and fro, watching to see how he can pick you out, how he can set a trap, how he can snare you, how he can whisper in your ear, how he can give you false accusations, but greater, greater is he who is in you than he is in, who is in the world. And so I just want to finally end with um, the armor of God in Ephesians 6, and it's verse 10 to 17. Finally, girls, okay, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not just against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on your armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you will be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything else, stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth, buckled round your waist with a breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to this, take up your shield of faith. And with that, you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And that's why we can never get away from the word of God because it is your, you know, it is what you are going to fight the devil with. You know, when Jesus was tempted, and I've said this before, he just quoted the Bible. And if Jesus was going to be tempted, how much more will we be tempted? Okay. So in conclusion, he is the great I am. He is faithful to you. He will deliver you. He does care for you and he does protect you. But remember, I spoke about a conditional promise. We need to abide in his presence. We need to get in the shelter of the Most High. We need to come away, get the Bible out and start reading it. We need to pray with, to him and we need to let the word of God soak our lives. In finishing, I just want to read these verses to you again, okay? He will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy. He will protect you from false accusation and any deadly curse. His massive arms are wrapped around you, protecting you. You can run under his cover of majesty and hide. His arms of faithfulness are a shield keeping you from harm. He is the great I am. And when you waken up tomorrow, he is still the great I am. So look forward to hearing you. I think today is gonna to be our first time that we're actually gonna go on to Instagram and we're gonna have a conversation about this, okay? So if you move to Instagram in the next five minutes, hope we press all the right buttons and we'll see if we can have a conversation. If you have any questions, you can maybe text them in and I will get someone to answer them for you. <laughs> we'll see how we get on, okay? Have a good week and we'll see you on Instagram. Thank you.